Aw, don't go. We're just getting to know each other. Alright, tough guy. I admit, I'm a little impressed. I can't think of the last time one of you cannon fodder goons even slowed me down. <laughs> uh, guess I should ask for a raise. A raise? So you're one of those mercenary types. Uh, more like unemployed with a lot of debt types. And so you decided this was a worthwhile career move? Hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? Okay, enough playing around, hero. Back off or these hostages and I are headed to the same place. That's hell. Because this is a bomb. I'm a friend against the bomb. No, you're not. Uh, excuse me? Even if that was a bomb, it's not. I don't think you'd set it off. This is just a job for you, right? You're not going to die for it, and you definitely won't kill for it. In fact, I don't think you're a violent person at all. You, uh, you sure you're not making a few leaps in judgment there? Positive. And like I said, that's not even a bomb. I scanned it. It's a radio of some kind. Battery's running low, by the way. May I want to take care of that? No. Oh. Uh, thanks. Well, nice chatting with you. Likewise, Mr. Henchman for Hire. Okay, this is just a tranquilizer, so it won't hurt, but you're gonna feel pretty groggy when you come to. Sweet dreams.
Hey, Stan, you're alive! You thought I died? Well, you kind of looked like it. And you didn't check? <sighs> Never mind. Let's just get the hell out of here. Hey there, sunshine. Gotta say, I didn't expect to see your raggedy ass outfit here when I got the call. A data science facility is one hell of a step up from a pet store. Oh, uh, definitely no offense intended. I'm just tired, it's all. Long day, got hit with an elephant tranquilizer. You know how it is. I think I'm gonna turn in early, watch some web flicks in bed, and maybe grab a pint of ice cream. Uh-uh, not before you've had the chance to dance. Normally, I'm not one to pick up nervous scraps, but we had so much fun last time that I've gotta insist. Okay, but at least let me change the music first. I can't keep tempo with all these alarms. Nah, it's easy. I'll lead, you follow. Now, come on, sunshine. Let's kick this party up a notch. What? Tell them to wait! I can't. The pilot isn't in my squad, so I don't have the authorization. Sorry, buddy. Remember to lift your knees. Wow, nice hustle! I don't think I've ever seen you move that fast, Dan. I'll have to find some tasks that take advantage of that speed when we get back. Awesome job out there. Screw. I mean, fine, whatever. Thanks, I guess. No problem, respected colleague. Always happy to help. Let's get the exciting part out of the way. I'll show you the research plan. Come on. Actually, soccer was my sport in high school. I was a pretty serviceable midfielder, believe it or not. Didn't score a lot of goals, but I could facilitate well enough. Why didn't you play in college? Ah, eh, you know, it's just so much running. All right, smart guy. What were you doing in college then? Hey, relax. I'm just teasing. I actually think it's cool. What kind of story were you working on? Just a sci-fi thing. Nothing crazy. I called it The Lost Princess of Europa. I started it as a political thriller, then it turned into a space opera, then a romance, then basically just crashed into the sun. It was not meant to be. Oh god, why did I tell you that? Just forget I brought it up, okay? Hey, don't worry about it. It's gutsy that you'd try something out of your wheelhouse like that. 
I mean, I could never try the whole science thing. Or math. If I see too many numbers, they just start to blend together into one big confusion smoothie. Come on, you can't be that bad. Totally can't. I drew a mean graph, though. The wrong graph, but you know, it looked real nice. If it's any consolation, my stories really weren't much better. When I was writing them, I thought they were just so good, but when I go back to read them... Yeah, let's just say I'm definitely a science girl. I still love to read. I just won't be writing the next Professor Anomaly. Well, you're in good company, because I can't write for shit either. Well, good being relative, I guess. <laughs> no kidding. You can't write. You suck at math. What can you do? Get punched in the face, mostly. I'm a bona fide stud in the field of me childry. Can't dish it out at all, huh? I can try. Yeah, pretty hard to put a dent in someone that can bench press a car, but I've slowed them down. Temporarily. Okay, I think we've seen all there is to see here. Let's hit the game room. Most of them, maybe. But I'll have you know that I actually managed to put up a bit of a fight before getting clobbered. Wow, so you weren't instantly knocked out? That's impressive. Between that and running SNS, you must be a celebrity around here. Oh yeah, big time. Don't worry, I'll give you an autograph before your gig is done. You're welcome in advance. I'm good, thanks. So, are any of those darts yours, by the way? I never said that. Well, you implied it. I mean, you're clearly not the conductor of the Lord Bedlam hype train. Fair enough, I guess. You're not gonna rat me out as a non-believer, are you? Consider it your one favor for not teasing me about my fanfiction. I just wanna know, that's all. Why become a henchman? Instead of what? Finding a cubicle to waste away in? No thanks. Oh, wow. Really? You just want to stick it to the man? Not really stick it to him so much as throw him a curveball. Do something unexpected for once. I just kind of woke up one day and realized that my life had been this big checklist, you know? I was just meeting the requirements. You ever felt like that? You mean like you've been living for someone else? Yeah, I think everyone has. Some things you just do because you're supposed to. Exactly. I mean, I didn't even want to go to college. I just thought I had to. So being a henchman may just be a job, sometimes a crappy job, but at least it's off the beaten path. Road less traveled and all that shit. So, let me get this straight. You became a henchman to stop fulfilling society's expectations and fulfill Lord Bedlam's instead? No, I mean, look, that's different. I'm doing my job, but it's like you said, I'm not buying into the whole Lord Bedlam cult here. I guess I'm just curious how you've managed that, because I don't want to. Become a Bedlam bot? Well, you're only here temporarily, so you should be fine. Yeah, right, but how do you do it? You just, what, take off the uniform and forget all about robberies and hostages? That's it? Pretty much. The job is the job, and I do it the best I can, even if I don't always agree with it. It just doesn't stop me from also thinking that Bedlam Copter is a stupid name for a vehicle. They're not really called that. They can't be. Oh, you poor innocent child. You haven't even seen the Bedlam bus. <laughs> okay, now you're just teasing me. Oh! Oh, you're really not... Wow. Yep. Surprise. That's right, mister! I'm not surprised by your surprise! No, uh, like I said, I was really surprised. Just... No, oh, don't worry. You'll definitely be surprised this time.
surprise! It's baloney casserole. Yeah, surprise, right? <laughs> I can tell. I am feeling several emotions. One is definitely surprise. And then what else, eh? Gratitude, maybe? That and just, you know, joy. Boundless, unparalleled joy. Because after eating your bologna casserole, I just thought, gosh, I could eat this for the rest of my life. <laughs> Funny you should say that. <laughs> Have a swell day. Hope it's full of surprises. <laughs> What, uh, what exactly is that? Exactly? No idea. Officially, it's called bologna casserole, or bologna hot dish, depending on what tray it's in. Bologna. Seriously? No, this is very serious, Kate. The chef and I appear to be in some sort of blood feud. Even if I survive, my taste buds won't. You have my sympathies. You can also have some of my food, if you want. I appreciate it, but I don't want to bring this curse down on anyone else. Chef Antonio has a good memory when it comes to faces. Ah, I see. Guess I'll have to remember to not get in line with you after this, huh? Probably for the best. So anyway, I was... So, where's home for you? What do you mean? You know, where'd you grow up? You don't have to be embarrassed. My supervisor's from some farm in the middle of nowhere. You can't be worse off than him. Hey, I'm not exactly from a big city myself. I mean, it's not tiny, but it's no metropolis either. So, did this vaguely sized city have a name? A location? Or did it never exist in the first place? It was in the Northwest. Whoa, whoa, hold on. I need a second to process all that detail. Sorry, it's just, I mean, you know the business we're in. I just feel safer keeping that life away from this life. It's nothing personal. Oh man, you're really green as grass, huh? Look, you can keep your whole life a secret if you want. That's up to you. But the truth is that the big guys, they don't care. Sure, the superheroes and supervillains need to keep a lid on their personal lives, but when's the last time you heard of someone discovering a henchman's secret identity? Well, I haven't, but it just seems practical. Aren't you worried about someone messing with your life? Or using your friends and family as leverage? Nah, not really. Superheroes don't play dirty like that. Plus, I'm sure my family would agree that I deserve a few kicks in the head. That is, if anyone ever bothered to track them down. But why would they? To a superhero, I'm just one of 200 warm bodies in a purple suit. I'm not important enough for that. But hey, no big deal. I was just trying to get to know you a little. But I guess I'm just not cool enough. Oh, come on. Don't pout. It has nothing to do with your coolness. So you're saying I'm cool? Let's not get crazy. Look, I'll tell you a little. About home, I mean. Like I said, it's not a big city. Maybe a hundred thousand people? Not much really happens there. And pretty much everyone there is an outdoorsy hipster. You know, beard, flannel, and beanie types. Not that I mind. I like the people there. I just didn't always fit in with them. All the hiking and getting in touch with nature is just inefficient. Why not do something productive? Why am I not surprised to hear that you're a workaholic? I am not a workaholic. I'm taking time to talk to you, aren't I? And I appreciate it. See, look at you, sharing and stuff. Don't make me regret it.
So you decided to come bludgeon my door like it owes you money at the crack of dawn because there was a remote chance that I'd have a meeting this morning. Is that right? Yep. Where there's a chance, there's a way. That's what my grandpappy always said. And this time it turns out there was a way. That doesn't... Just send me a text or something next time, all right? Waking me up like that just puts me off balance for the rest of the day. You wouldn't want to mess with my efficiency, would you? Oh, oh gosh, no. Of, of course not. That's a good point. Okay, no problem. Text next time. Got it. Thanks for the feedback, Stan. Yeah. You know, life's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And that means you've got to pace yourself. I have no use for vague metaphors, Stanley. Be specific. Okay, what I mean is, the thing about being a henchman is, we're not really supposed to beat the superheroes, right? It happens every now and then. Yeah, but not often. And when it does, usually we've got some crazy advantage. You can kind of see it coming. A lot of guys don't get that, though. They're always trying to win. Me, I know my role. I know what I'm up against. So maybe sometimes when I'm lying on the ground, seeing stars, and I know that getting back up isn't going to do any good, I just stay down. Some might call that laziness. Even weakness. By some, do you mean you? That depends on your reasoning. I'd call it knowing my limits. I do what I can, and that's all I can do. Hmm, interesting. That's more astute than you realize. Uh, it is? Only a fool fights a battle they cannot win. Yet, that's what people are told to do. As if grinding yourself to dust trying to do the impossible is some noble and sacred pursuit. Some call it fighting spirit. Others might call it grit. Whatever the name, though, it's a fantasy. Turning a defeat into a total loss for honor's sake is the height of folly. Yeah, the, that's what I was going for. Just less eloquent. Whether you were going for it or stumbled into it face first doesn't matter. You've grasped the concept. I guess. Stumbling just, uh, doesn't sound as cool. That's true. Keeping up appearances is important too. But that's an advanced concept. One that I have already mastered, as you can see. Here's the point, Stanley, and do keep this in mind. The Scorpion Group has been observing this organization for months now. We know everything about it, including you. And with that knowledge, you are the first henchman I chose to speak to. Not your supervisor or Bedlam's other acolytes. You. And you kept me from getting flattened at that data center. Uh, thanks again, by the way. Yes, I did. As I said, I was protecting my investment. Which includes you, Stanley. However small your contribution. You see, Henchcan is still in a closed beta. And that goes both ways. Not only are we selective with the organizations that can utilize the program, but the henchmen who can join it. To succeed on Henchcan, contractors need a certain mindset, a set of patterns and behaviors that will let them thrive and solidify the program's ecosystem. Based on the data, you may have that mindset, Stanley. 
But I can't know for sure without reviewing your performance in person. So let's return to that subject, shall we? In fact, let's speak of a specific performance. Two days ago, you were part of an operation. Your squad was left in the rear guard. Do you recall what happened? A very painful celebrity meet and greet. <laughs> yes. Shining Nova is quite the famous superhero. And you two met face to face. More like face to helmet. But yeah, we got acquainted. Kind of. It's not very satisfying, is it? To meet someone who hides themselves so completely. It's even less satisfying to get tranquilized by them. I imagine. Fighting someone is so much more intimate when you can see their eyes. Their hatred. Their fear. Their pain. I'm, uh, usually on the opposite end of that last part. That's too bad. The feeling pain is well and good. But you can't really appreciate it until you've given it to. You're really missing out, Stanley. But back to the matter at hand. You were the final member of the rear guard to engage Shining Nova during that operation, and you did so alone, after your colleagues had all rushed in at once or fled. When you put it like that, I sound pretty stupid. You certainly didn't have the odds in your favor. In fact, we did an exact calculation of your chances of success in that scenario. They were 600,000 to one. And now I sound really stupid. If your goal was to succeed. But you weren't trying to succeed, were you, Stanley? Not in the traditional sense. Why don't we review your moment-to-moment -moment decisions during this encounter? So, Stanley, here you are. You were faced with an A-list superhero all by yourself. What did you do? Well, I figured that if I didn't move, I was going to get blasted in the face. And everyone attacking at once had just failed pretty horribly. So I just kind of dove for cover. That's sound reasoning. If unconventional for someone of your lowly rank. Unconventional how? It seems like common sense. Statistically, of course. Typical henchman reactions to a threat are to flail wildly in some pale imitation of attack or to flee in terror. Every now and then you may see a few try to avoid a specific attack, but it's rare for such an attempt to succeed. Based on the data, your actions and their outcome were somewhat remarkable. So, does this mean I have some kind of enhanced reflexes or something? <laughs> oh, goodness no, Stanley. Just look at you. Yes, I see your point. I should hope so. You land with all the grace of a bag of yams. I think the expression is a sack of potatoes. Does it matter? Are potatoes more graceful than yams? Uh, no, I guess they basically have the same amount of grace, as in none whatsoever. And yet, despite your starch-like reflexes, you managed to avoid Shining Nova's blast. Because, fortunately for you, you think faster than either a yam or a potato. Sadly, quick thinking is sometimes no match for raw power. I wouldn't say it's no match. More like half a match. 40%. Maybe a third. I did get a shot in there. 
A whole shot, you say? I think this qualifies as a shot. I mean, look at that. I definitely jammed up Nova's knee joint right there. It's totally a shot. Very well. Let's define that as one shot. Now with that in mind, what would you call this? That's also a shot. You truly think those are equivalent? Well, yeah. Like you said, my goal wasn't to succeed, but Nova's was. For me, a shot is just slowing Nova down. But for Nova, a shot was an attempt to put me down. You, uh, know what I'm saying? Perfectly. And you're exactly right. For you, getting brushed aside by a superhero is normal. But for Shiny Nova, to be delayed by you for so much longer than their mean henchman disposal time is an embarrassment. Why, if I'd been in Shining Nova's position, I'd have no choice but to cut you into little pieces just to save face. Not that I'd let you live long enough to let you delay me in the first place, of course. Well, a uh, good thing I work for you then, so you never have to think about cutting me to pieces, even large ones. Never say never, Stanley. But let's get back to Wednesday's operation. If you look at the footage right here, you'll notice something interesting about where you landed. What might that be? I'm pretty close to a door. And the engineers that we took captive aren't far either. Correct. Though you didn't realize that second bit so quickly at the time. In fact, you don't notice until this moment right here. And then what precisely did you do with this newly acquired knowledge? I threatened them. Sort of. I didn't exactly have a weapon or anything, so I just pretended my communicator was a bomb. An excellent idea! But there was one problem with that plan. Your opponent. Yeah, I guess someone with super sci-fi vision isn't going to confuse a walkie-talkie for a grenade. No, they aren't. That said, I also don't imagine you would have any idea of knowing that at the time. Given your situation, you made the best possible move. You made use of your environment and the weak-willed, faint-hearted tendencies of most superheroes. With a different opponent, you may have forced a standoff. Yet, even as it stands, you still caused a minor delay. See how Shining Nova abruptly halts? There's hesitation there. Weakness. More importantly, you showed the kind of attitude needed to succeed in the Hengecan program, Stanley. You saw the exposed throat of your enemy, and you pressed your blade against it. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that exactly. It's not like I was using a real bomb. The hostages were never in actual danger. But they didn't know that, did they? For a moment, their fear was real. Your power over them was real. Couldn't you feel it, Stanley? Didn't it taste delicious? Maybe? I can't really say that I've tasted too many emotions. I mean, maybe pain, but I think that's more like blood getting into my mouth and stuff. You'll grow accustomed to it, I have no doubt. It's rather addicting, and as you're starting to discover, effective. Now then, I think we've seen enough of this, haven't we? So, Stanley, after reviewing the footage, would you say this is a normal operation for you? No. Definitely more exciting. And after our review, 
Would you say that you performed better or worse than your peers in this scenario? Well, better, but... And how were you compensated for this operation compared to normal? How about compared to your peers? I'll answer for you. The same on both counts. But that's how it works, isn't it? You're paid a salary, and that doesn't change when things are harder or your performance is better. No, you can't earn more without a review, like this one, and they don't come often. But dear Stanley, what if I told you that you can? You mean I, uh, can? can? Exactly. I admit, I wasn't entirely sold on the name until we focus tested it with a few slogans. But it really works, doesn't it? I guess so. Where are you going with this? I'm getting to that, Stanley. But first, why don't we turn this discussion inward? What drives you, Stanley? What do you mean? I mean that as a henchman for Lord Bedlam, who or what do you serve before all else? To tell the truth, I'm looking out for myself. Not that I won't do my job or anything, but at the end of the day, I've got to take care of things for me. That's just how it is. Correct. Well said, Stanley. I wasn't aware this was a question you could get right or wrong. Of course it is. It's simply a matter of being honest with yourself. No matter what you had said, your actions would already have spoken for you. During your everyday tasks, you trend right inside the average by every available metric. You do not perform better or worse than any of your fellow henchmen. You are perfectly commonplace. But when you are personally at risk during operations, you are suddenly head and shoulders above the pack, despite having no powers or exceptional athletic background. In other words, Stanley, you are performing at the optimal level for your own self-interests. You have found exactly how to do your job and collect your paycheck with as little pain and effort as possible. Yeah, I can't really deny it, but that's just how you treat a job, isn't it? You clock in, you do what you have to do, and you clock out. I suppose many do. But this is something that extends well beyond one's occupation. Why should you try to perform any better when you have no incentive to do so? Should you throw yourself at superheroes based on the distant dream of a promotion? Of course not. No. You have learned that the optimal path forward within this system is to intentionally perform below your potential. So that's what you do. And make no mistake, you have potential, Stanley. All you need to bring it out is a system that rewards you appropriately. And this, Stanley, is what I have been getting at. Henchcan is that system. With Henchcan, you would be rewarded based on the work you do. If you accept more gigs or more difficult ones, then you earn more. If you perform better on a gig, you earn more. It's simple. Take Wednesday's operation, for example. You would have been paid better than your peers for that, and certainly better than your supervisor. How would that make you feel? Um, good, I guess. But, uh, I work for Lord Bedlam. And? He employs you, but should he own you? Your days could be his, and your nights. Could be mine. You, uh, you mean hench cans, right? Your program? 
<laughs> Why, of course, Stanley. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. You're exactly the kind of candidate we need. You'd be just perfect for it. And as it happens, I know of a gig tonight that would be an excellent trial run. You should sign up. Sorry, but I need a little more information before I could commit to a program like that. I mean, you make a persuasive argument, but... No further explanation necessary, Stanley. The only right decision is an informed one. What do you think is on all these screens? Information. Data. Without these things, on what grounds can someone make a decision? Intuition? Instinct? Why, that's no better than a dog. Though, I think you'll find the gig itself to be quite enlightening. Think of it as a scouting mission of sorts. That makes sense. I'll think about it. Very well. In the meantime, I suggest you download our Henchcan app. You'll find more detailed information there. You'll find a QR code on the bulletin boards in the break rooms or at the entrance of the cafeteria. Tonight's gig should be immediately available to you. Take a few hours to collect some more information and think it over. But not too long. You'd hate to disappoint me. I'm sure I would. Oh, now that wasn't a question. You'd really hate it from the bottom of your heart. I'd make certain of it. Then, dear Stanley, you'd see where I have my other meetings. You mean the ones where people are in trouble? Precisely. That is all, number 065. You are dismissed. Uh, right. Got it. Thanks. I guess that's what you'd expect when you're alone in a room with a bona fide top tier supervillain. You've never been in a room alone with Lord Bedlam? Uh, nope. No. Guess not. He's impressive too, of course. Supremely impressive. But Madam Scorpion just has this presence, you know? Yeah, presence. I'm sure that's what you're talking about. I am, really. Sure, she has other things too, like great fashion sense, you know. She wears a cat suit, and not correctly, I may add. Well, it's probably a designer cat suit, Italian or something. And for all you know, that zipper could be broken, okay? Pretty shoddy craftsmanship for a designer cat suit, then, wouldn't you say? I don't make the laws of fashion, Kate. I'm just a student of them. Seriously, though. I mean it. She's the kind of person that becomes the center of attention the moment she walks into a room. Even rooms she's not in, apparently. Hey, you asked. I did, yeah. And you're right. She's very commanding. Look, just be careful around her. I'm serious about what I said. Not everyone that walks into a room with Madame Scorpion walks back out. You're playing too. Stan didn't tell me that. Uh, what class are you gonna be? I'm playing a bard. So I hope you bring your dancing shoes because I'm gonna be jamming out some rocking tunes all night long. Really, Dave, you don't have to sing. We don't have any accompanying instruments. I told you, buddy, it's no trouble at all. 
gosh, it'll be like I'm back in my high school glee club again. You guys are in for a treat. We're in for something. Well, I, for one, can't wait, Dave. I'm sure you've got a great singing voice. Well, I do love money. So right now, I guess I'm leaning towards the side game. Really? I didn't realize things were that tight for you. The henchcan rates seem pretty good for this assignment, so I get it, but... I won't lie, I'd be a little disappointed if this super exclusive SNS meetup of yours is cancelled after all the hype. I was kind of hoping we could hang out. But it's no big deal, really. You do what you've got to do. Hey, I'm not blowing you off. Promise. And this is just what I'm thinking right now. Maybe I'll change my mind. Who knows? Well, whatever call you make, don't sweat it. Honest. Thanks, Rookie. Whatever I end up deciding, you guys will be the first to know. <laughs>